Hi, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads. Join me in making this ballerina bracelet, which is a combination of tubular peyote as well as tubular netting, which is actually just peyote. Join me with all the materials, whatever you have you can do this with. We're just graduating from smaller to bigger. If you do need any supplies, check out the links below to shop with us online. Let's get started. So to begin this design, we are going to be starting with tubular peyote stitch. We're then gonna be progressing from tubular peyote stitch into actual tubular netting. When we're into tubular netting then, I'm going to show you that tubular netting is actually just peyote stitch. That's it, that's all it is. It's just basically skipping some beads. So we're gonna begin with our regular tubular peyote stitch. I want you to pick up one 15-0, and for the materials, I'm using 15-0s in Crystal Lab Fool, and then I'm using 11-0s in the White Lila Vega Luster. I want you to pick up a series of one of each three times. We're going to move our six millimeter pearls out of the way. And we're also going to be using some one and a half millimeter rondelle, and I'm using the pale pink opal color. We have some white Lila Vega three millimeter beads. I have some light rose three by four millimeter rondelles, four millimeter crystal lab full, and then my six millimeter pearls. I have a stop bead on my thread, and I'm going to take my thread and needle back through the 15 and come out through the 11. And this is going to be next to that stop bead. And you're sewing away from the stop bead. Push that down next to the stop bead. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the design. Pick up one more of your pink 11 O's, and you're going to sew into the next pink 11 O's, skipping the silver. Add one more pink, sew into the next pink bead. Right now, when you start tubular peyote, it looks a little bit like a flower. It starts to kind of build out. You're gonna add one more pink, sew through that first pink that your thread was coming out of. So you're skipping over the 15. And then what I want you to do is kind of force those sides up. So if you don't know tubular peyote, you may want to watch one of the beginner videos first. So see all those pink beads kind of sticking out to the side? What you're going to do is you're going to push those towards the top. That first bead that you added there, the one that's sticking up to the side right after that first 15, you're going to also sew through that bead. That's called stepping up. We're going to do another round now with the pink beads where we add a pink bead and you're going to go into that one next one that sits higher that we're forcing upward. Again, when you're doing this, what we want to do is this wants to sit on top of the previous bead kind of pink one there in the middle. So give a nice tight pull and it's going to start to take the tubular shape. Add another pink bead, that's number two, and sew through the next pink bead sitting up. Again, if you are struggling with tubular peyote, watch one of the basic tubular peyote videos before going into a graduated one like we're doing. One more pink bead gets added. And then I go into that first pink bead that my thread was originally coming out of, bead number one. And sorry, right there I added two, we're gonna take one off. After you add that one bead, and you're sewing back through that first bead there, what we're gonna do is step up. So you'll start to see three beads every time kind of sitting towards the top. I'm gonna to sew through that first bead that I just added. Each time around in this netting, this peyote, I will be adding three beads. So there I have one more pink. This is my new round. I'm sewing in bead number two from the row before, coming out of bead number one. Add a bead, I'm sewing into bead number three from the row before. Add a bead, I'm sewing back into bead number one that my thread was sewing out of. By the time you get this section there, you can really start to see what's sitting towards the top. After you add three beads, you wanna sew back in to bead number one and start over. Pick up a bead coming out of one, sew into bead number two. Pick up a bead coming out of two, sew in to bead number three. Pick up a bead, sew back in to bead number one. So you make sure it doesn't start twisting, step up into the first bead of that set of three. Now what we're gonna do as now that you have kind of that 
tubular style. You can make that tube as long or as short as you want. We're going to be adding the tubular style as we add our nice little ballerina balls here. And those nice ballerina fluff pieces are going to start our actual netted peyote. So we're still doing the netted peyote as well as the netting, so it's kind of all one and the same and I'm going to show you why. It's a little bit kind of secret. So what I'm going to do now is get out my next size up of my beads. So remember I'm graduating, I'm going from the smallest to the biggest. I have those pretty little pink rondelles and we're going to do two rows of each of our size as we go from bigger to smaller. So this time as I go in and I pick up these three pink beads there, I'm going to add one of my rondelles instead of my 11 OC beads. So on goes a rondelle, I sew from bead number one to bead number two. On goes a rondelle, sew from bead number two to bead number three. On goes one of my crystal little tiny rondelles, and I sew from bead number three into bead number one. Just like that, I'm going to sew from bead number one of my 11 O's, stepping up into my pretty crystal rondelles. I should have mentioned also I have a size 10 beading needle on here and some .006 wildfire thread. If you do want a size 12, you can do that if you're using some tiny gemstones or you're continuing with smaller beads. What we're gonna do now is one more time around with our tiny rondelles and then we're going to step up into the next size bead, which is going to be our three millimeter white lila check round bead. I'm going one more time around now since I stepped up and I'm gonna add three more of my rondelles. So we're adding three more rondelles into the mix. So we're always adding three beads in a time to get this tubular peyote. Sewing back through the first rondelle that my thread was coming out of here and then, just like every other time, we're going to step up. As we step up, we are going to start to include our three millimeter rounds. So I'm gonna get out my next size up, and this size is gonna be my three millimeter rounds. As I add my three millimeter rounds, I'm also gonna add a 15-0 in between each. So I have my three millimeter rounds, one 15 O seed bead, one three millimeter round, one 15 OC bead, and then I'm sewing into bead number two in that last row of my rondelles. You have a nice tight pull so you don't have a lot of thread showing. Again, 15, three millimeter round, 15. And remember the 15s are the crystal lab full. I'll go back after the fact and extend some of that silver back there. Into, then, my third bead goes on, and now I'm going to go through that first crystal rondelle again. As I do my step up, where I'm going to step up now as I get ready to add my next rotation of my beads, I'm going to step up to come out of my big three millimeter round bead. I'm going through my first 15 out and out through my three millimeter round. When I come out my three millimeter round bead, I'm gonna continue with the peyote, but it's gonna start looking like a netting because I'm going to be adding smaller beads to hide the thread so we don't see a crazy amount of thread here. We're gonna add some smaller beads, and as I add the smaller beads, it's going to turn it into called tubular netting. However, tubular netting really is just peyote. So here I'm gonna add one more row of my three millimeter rounds with a 15-0 between each. So I add a 15, add my three, add a 15, and then go through just the three millimeter rounds. I've done it once, I get to do it two more times. On goes through the 15, I'm gonna pick up my three, on goes a 15, and I sew through just the three millimeter round. So I'm never sewing through any of the 15 OC beads. And you can see how that's expanding and starting to almost look like a bead cap. This is also a great idea if you do want to learn how to make bead caps. So that's a wonderful idea. I have one more to add, then I'm going to sew through the one my thread was coming out of, sew through the first 15, and come out through my first 3 millimeter bead from this row of peyote I'm working on. 
After coming out my three millimeter round, I'm going to continue with adding the 15 O's on the side of all of those beads as I go in and create. And you can see if I form forward, you can still see kind of that peyote effect that you have three beads that are facing or sticking up. And this time I'm gonna start with my light rose colored three by four millimeter rondelles, adding them in with a 15 on each side. As you add them in, obviously it's getting bigger because the beads are getting bigger, but you still don't want to see any extra thread showing. We're gonna do two rows of these three, mil or three by four millimeter crystals. And remember, you're never sewing through the 15s from the previous row. You're only adding them to cover the thread in the peyote. This is where kind of sometimes people don't understand that netting is really just a form of peyote. You're just ignoring most of the beads and just going through, generally speaking, the center bead. After I come out the last of those three beads there, so back through bead number one of the previous row, I'm again going to step up through the 15 and come out through that rondelle. When I come out through the rondelle, you can see I have three rondelles on. I'm going to do another row of the rondelles, always adding in two rows of each of the beads as I start to progress. After the crystals then, I'm going to progress into my four millimeter rounds. As I progress into my four millimeter rounds here, what I wanna do with the four millimeter rounds then is start to add in here my 11 O's in that rose color to bring a little bit more of that pop of color out. So on goes one more row of my crystals. So I'm adding six of each bead type, two rows of three to each of the rotations. I'm gonna do one more row of my three by four crystals, three more go on, and then I'm going to start on my four millimeter crystal lab rounds with some of my 11 O's in that pretty white lila luster. After you're done adding in your six of your three millimeter or your four millimeter beads in the crystal lab full, it is gonna be time to add in your pearls. To add in your pearls, the rotation is going to be that you wanna add in one of your 11 OC beads in that pretty pink color, one 15 OC bead, and then one of your pearls. You're gonna do the opposite, going 15 and then 11. And once you have those on to your thread and needle, you're going to sew into the next three millimeter or four millimeter crystal lab bead. Pull those in tight and you can see how they kind of just sit nestled there. The rest of the beads, we've been doing two rows. When it comes to the pearls, we are going to do three rows of pearls. After we do the third row of pearls then, we are going to go back and do a little bit of embellished, almost right angle weave kind of look to the center to make it really stand out and have that kind of ballerina fluttering skirt. I'm gonna go in here and go through, adding in the rest of my pearls. And you can see here my thread is short. You're gonna end up using, uh, for your necklace, probably about 10 feet of thread. It's a lot of thread, especially if you wanna go and do a lot more of the kind of ballerina cones here that you're looking at. So I'm gonna show you then also, after we go in and do our center decoration, we're gonna do the exact same thing downgrading, and then we're gonna go in and I'll show you how to connect, or ideas for connect. You can even just do it as a single unit if, if you want. As you go in here and you're stepping up then, I'm coming out my first of my four millimeter beads that my thread was coming out of. I'm sewing through my first 11 L, then my 15 L, and then as I do that, I'm also then going to sew through my pearl and come out my pearl. So you can see hopefully how, even though it's a netting, because we're adding in seed beads and we're getting that nice netted look here, that you can see that it's actually just peyote stitch. So it's going from being that bright kind of, or that tight netted to that simple peyote stitch. It's all the same. So I'm gonna go around one more time and do my peyote stitch with my seed beads on the side. This time as I go in, same thing, I'm gonna do our 15, 11, and then hit up my pearl. So it was doing 11 and then 15. Now I'm going to switch it and do 15 and then 11. That way, coming out of this last pearl is gonna be the same creation of 15s and then 11. So it looks like these 15s are both nestling along the side of the pearl. So two more rotations. The first one is going to be 15, 
then 10 or 11, then purl, then 11, then 15. After that, the next one is going to alternate back to the 11, then 15 to get them to look the same. As you finish up your third row of your pearl beads, and you can see how it's kind of getting bigger still, here's where we're gonna have fun and actually do our crisscrossing. I have on here three of our 15s, then one of my tiny two, one and a half by two millimeter crystals, one three millimeter bead, and then the repeat the opposite direction. I'm acting like I'm getting ready to step up on the design, and instead of stepping up on the design, what we're actually gonna do is create a crisscrossing effect. I'm gonna take my thread and needle, rather than going in and adding my next silver bead, and I'm taking after adding these onto my thread and needle, I'm going up to the top of the pearl that sits directly beside it, and out the bottom. When I do this, now you can keep in mind, you can keep it with just this pattern if you want, if you don't want to do the crossing effect. Now what I'm gonna do is add three more of my 15s, one of my crystals, and then I'm gonna share my three millimeter bead, going up towards the top, of the pearl that my thread was originally coming out of. From here, I'm gonna add one more of my tiny crystals, three more of my 15 O's, and come back down through the pearl that the thread was originally coming out of. Give a nice tight pull, and that gets that nice crisscrossing effect that happens on top of the pearls. When you have that nice crisscrossing effect kind of on top of the pearls here, what you're gonna do then is get ready to do your next downgrade. So I'm doing 15, 11, and then a four millimeter in that crystal lab full. And I know leather's not ideal to beat on, this has been a challenge. And then I have my 11, my 15, so I'm doing it backwards, and then I'm sewing through my next pearl. When I sew through the next pearl, then I'm gonna come back in, do that crisscrossing effect, come out the pearl, so on my next bead to encapsulate it and form that nice cone football shape that I'm getting as I create these little dancing ballerinas. Once you're done all three of your crisscross there on top of that kind of almost beaded bead look, you're downgrading. You're doing the exact same thing that we did as we built the start of the cone. We're doing the opposite and downgrading from this larger cone down to the smaller size. Going in now, I'm gonna do my crisscross adding my 15s, then my crystal, then my, uh, my three millimeter crystal 15s down through the pearl here. Crisscross through as you add in your extra little seed beads back to the top of the pearl, so down through, and then you add your four millimeter bead in. So you're embellishing as you're doing the downgrade to add your two rows then. You do one row of the four millimeters, then you do another row of the four millimeter, then you do two rows of your three by four crystal, then you do two rows of your three millimeter round, then you do two rows of your tiny crystals, and then back into the 11s and the 15s. After we go in and we downgrade this, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do a nice connection point using the 15s and then one of our pearls to connect our little units here as we progress in the design. So once you're done your unit, it's time to decide how you want to add them together. Now what I did for my design in the example here, and then I'm eventually just going to add it together so I have them repeated, is I did four rows of my 11 OC bead in that nice white lila color. And I have four rows. You can count one, two, three, four. And you can know that that's four rows of three. I then did four rows of my silver in my 15 OC bead. What I'm gonna show you right now is how to add them together with a pearl. You could simply string the pearl through the thread and then start over, but it's not gonna sit right. And also, I hate to have one piece of thread going through a connection when you have a little bit of a heavier piece like this. So how to add the pearl so it sits to the center and it also is a nice stable feature. What I'm gonna do is add my pearl on here to my needle and thread. And this is as if I was getting ready to add my next bead onto my peyote stitch. So I've stepped up, I'm coming out through one of my three beads, I'm adding my pearl, and I'm adding one bead to the other side. I'm sewing back through my pearl, not through my 15 out. I'm pulling that down next to the bead my thread is currently coming out of. From here, 
I'm going to look over to my second bead in my POD stitch. So it's hard because they're 15s and it's shiny and bright. So I'm going to sew through my next bead over. So there's bead number one. I'm going to sew, sew over to bead number two to pull it a little bit more to center. So back through my pearl right there and I'm going to add bead number three or sorry two. Again sew back through the pearl and when you come out the pearl now you're going to get catch on to, you guessed it, bead number three because it's three rows of peyote stitch. So I'm going to kind of fold it over and say, oh yeah, here's the third bead it needs to come out of. Sew through it, go up through the pearl, making sure you're not coming through one of those 15s. Kind of shake it if you need to. When you pull nice and tight there, you can see the pearl sits right in the middle of that nice tight peyote stitch. Add your third and final bead for your peyote stitch on the top here to start your row. And then just sew through one of those beads right next to it. Right here then, go ahead and start your peyote stitch over. On goes one bead, sew through the bead that's already there. On goes another bead, sew through the bead that's already there. Again, one more bead goes on, sew through the bead that was already there and step up to the first bead that you just added on that stitch. So it'll look again a little bit like a flower and like you're getting ready to start over on your stitch. But what you're going to do then is treat it just as if you're starting over on the peyote stitch. That's what's going to keep it nice and centered on the design and be a nice tight link. So I'm going to go in and create another one of my pieces here. I'm going to end up with five total of my nice kind of ballerina sections here. And you can see how nice that's going to be once they all get added in to the design. I'll finish up the rope along the chain then with some more of just my tubular peyote stitch to get it nice and I don't want it super long. I'm going to make mine probably about 16 inches because I want it chunky and sitting high up like a ballerina right in front of my ballerina costume with this to match my frittily little skirt. When you get done the last row in your necklace, so you have all your connections on there and you're doing your last row, and if your rope is a little longer, you can keep going. I did about uh, 10 rows of my tubular peyote, and then I added a pearl. So I still have more to go, but I'm going to show you how to put on the clasp now. And if you want to, you can keep going. You can do four units, you can do three, you can do two, you can do one, you can do five. I'm going to end up with three units. You can see how it is. And then holding it up, you can see how it's going to fit on and how it's going to look. So to finish off the bracelet when you get done with the rope portion, I prefer to have a pearl on the end. Once I'm done the pearl on the end, I'm coming out and putting on an 11 OC bead in that lila color. Coming back down through that pearl and connecting here at this point. Going back through the next bead, sewing back up through. Now this time when I sew through, what I'm going to do here so this is my second bead. I'm going to sew through that bead that I used to catch on. And what that's going to be is my bead that I'm going to use to do my loop. So I'm going to gather up a bunch of my 15s now. Add on, if you're using a cup button like I'm going to use, you're going to add on a bunch of your beads for your cup button. If you have your button at this point, what you're going to do is add three 15 O's, add your cup button, come back down through your cup button, then you're going to add three more 15 O's, and then you're going to sew back in from the opposite side into this 11 out, just like I'm going to do to make the loop. About 32 beads will work of your 15 O's for your cup button. And I'm just picking these up one at a time. And then once I have enough of my buttons, or a bunch of my beads here, you can see I'm kind of going all over my bead mat. This is a great opportunity to clean up all of your 15 O's as you're finishing your design. And if you do want a little bit more color, you want this to go a little bit quicker, you can also switch to 15s, or I'm sorry, to 11 OC beads in the Duracoat Galvanized Silver or in the Crystal Lab Fool. Once you have the beads on that you want, you're going to come back through 
this center bead here, and you want to make sure whatever thread side your thread is coming out of, go into the opposite one. So you'll notice I picked it up a little bit with my needle. I'm going to sew into the opposite one to make my loop here, and then I'm going to sew it this time back down through my purl. I have one more spot to connect to my purl. So you're going to kind of bend it there, see where you have to connect. There's my open bead right there to connect to. Once I have my open bead that I'm connected to, I'm going to go back up through, come out of my purl, sew through my 11 0 seed bead, and then reinforce my loop. If you have a cut button here and you're doing the button end, you're going to do the exact same thing. Just instead of the loop, you're going up through that crystal lab full button. So I'm going to go back through, reinforce it, and then as I finish the design, I'm going to come back through the opposite side of that 11 0 seed bead, back through the purl, and weave back into my tubular peyote a little bit, tie off the thread, and burn the thread edge down. Now I still have some work to do on my design to give it a little bit more length and to put my button on the other side. I do want to hold it up so that way you can see and appreciate all the beauty that goes into this ballerina design. The fun thing about this is that you can use anything. I called it ballerina and then back and forth if you watch me on Twitch because of the different kind of light pink and beautiful look that it has. You can really have fun playing this up, doing all different size beads. Look through your bead stash for something that is that two, and then three, four, and that six millimeter and go to town. If you want to omit any of the beads, go for it. You're just going to have to figure out when you're doing that tubular peyote, how you want the actual tubular peyote and the netting to fit so you don't see a ton of extra thread. With all the materials, if you do lack something that you need, go ahead and check out the links below to shop with us online at potomacbeads.com. Remember also to always have fun when it comes to beading. If it's a longer project like this one, remember you can sit it down, come back to it to finish off the design. Again, if you don't know how to do regular tubular peyote, I suggest that you watch that video first so that way as you go in switching from the tubular peyote to the netting, which is also still the tubular peyote, you don't get a little confused. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing rest of your time, whether or not it's night, day, or evening, and have fun creating your nice ballerina design necklace.